Retired Navy SEAL David Goggins is described as the toughest man on the planet. Holding the pull-up record, 4,000 pull-ups in 17 hours. He's also an ultra-marathon runner with more than 60 races. Everybody thinks I'm Superman. I had to tell them the truth. I was not always this strong guy, you see. David Goggins is the only member of the U.S. Armed Forces to ever complete SEAL training. He beat the living hell out of me. U.S. Army Ranger School. I had stuff in my notebook, you know, we're going to kill you. And Air Force Tactical Air Controller Training. That's when the real war started for me. Athlete, speaker, soldier, and New York Times bestselling author, often referred to as the hardest motherfucker on planet Earth. Why is the truth so important? I'm about seven, eight years old, and I hear some ruckus outside my room as I'm getting ready to bed down for the night, and my dad is smacking the hell out of my mom, and knocks her. She falls down, he grabs her by her hair, and drags her down the stairs by her hair. And so at this age, I'm sort of thinking, man, you know, what the f should I do, man? Like, you know, I'm scared, but then something in me is saying, you gotta go and do something. So I go on the stairs, and I jump on his back, and he beat the living hell out of me. And he beat me literally from my neck down to my ankles. The next morning, um, I was gonna go to school half the day. My mom woke up and she pulled the covers back. And when she saw how bruised I was, I'll never forget looking at her face. She was broke, like she was just broken. My mom got courage to finally leave him when I was about eight years old. We moved to a small town in Brazil, Indiana, and that's when the real war started for me. There was about maybe 10 black families at about 10,000 people in the town. And in 1995, the KKK marched in the 4th of July parade. So me being one of the few black kids in that, you know, in that area, you know, it, it kind of haunts you. I had stuff in my notebook, you know, nigga, we're going to kill you. They had that on my car, nigga, we're going to kill you. This is early 90s. And um, even though I showed it didn't hurt me, it was jacking me up. So all the insecurities I had when I was a kid with my father, it just got worse and worse and worse. And it shit haunted me, but I was doing nothing about it. And so my mom and I, she was gone working three jobs. We lived in a $7 a month place for a lot of the time. And um, she had a hard way to go. I kept everything from her pretty much. I felt like I was a man of the house. So I didn't want her to know anything about my life. I cheated all through school, copied from the fourth grade to, the, to, to my junior year in high school on every assignment. She got a letter in the mail from my high school. And I'm a junior in high school, and, she, and the letter says pretty much your son's gonna flunk out. He's missed 25% of school. But she was always gone, so I didn't go to school. She read the letter to me, she put my bed, and I broke, I broke. I, I, I couldn't imagine going back through that again. And I started finding things that was comfortable. And the more things I found comfortable, the more uncomfortable my mind was. And um, I gained 125 pounds in that time frame. I went from 175 to almost 300. And I started working for a job called Ecolab, where you spray for cockroaches at 24. Driving home, turned the TV on, and I uh, was taking a shower. I walked out, heard these guys. I saw these guys going in the water, so I, I was terrified of it. I mean, I can't even express it. And these guys ringing the bell, quitting, dropping their helmet down, rolling out. A lot of guys just leaving. And it made me reflect on my fears, my insecurities. And I saw real men, what I thought were real men who were staying, who were overcoming adversity, who were overcoming all these different things that I had blamed so many fucking people in my life, my, my dad, my, my learning disability, my, my skin color. You know, me, me being everything. And so um, I sat there for a while and I was like, no one's gonna fucking come to help me. No one's gonna fucking come to help me. It's, it's fucking me against me, period. And I said, the first thing I start doing is facing every fucking fear I have. At this point, I actually drive back to Buffalo, New York to see my dad. Haven't seen him in years because I realize now I gotta fix some shit. I'm blaming everything, but I need to go back to the root of the problem which is my dad. I gotta face the demon. I gotta go back and see what made him so fucked up to make me so fucked up. Why am I fucked up? And I go back as an older man now, I'm, I'm in my 20s, I'm not a kid anymore. And I realized he was the same man that he was. I looked at him in a way, we never said sorry to one another. 
and he went off about my mom and my grandparents and all kind of shit. But I looked at him in a way that I realize now why you fucked this up. Somewhere in your fucking life, something fucked you up. And you didn't deal with it. And so you put that shit on me, my mom, and everybody around you. I'm gonna deal with my shit. You gave me this. I'm gonna fix it though. I go home, several months go by. What it was, I was obsessed with Rocky. When I was a kid, I'd come home every day and I would fast forward with the little VHS tapes to round 14. When Apollo Creed beat the fucking shit out of Rocky, beat the shit out of him, he kept fighting. He was a dumb fighter, that was me. Couldn't read, couldn't write. Apollo beat the shit out of him. He was in that corner and everybody was saying, stay the fuck down. And him getting up, him getting up, Apollo Creed raised his arms up in the fucking air, turned around, thought he won the fight. He turns around and sees this guy getting up and it was the face of Apollo Creed that changed my life. The face of Apollo Creed. It was like, just by that mother getting up, not winning, just by him getting the up, Rocky had taken his soul. His head goes down, he looks at him like, what the fuck are you? But said, this motherfucker is gonna keep coming after whatever the f is in front of him. I want it to be that. I want it to feel something besides defeat. I want it to just go to distance. I wanted that worse than anything in the world. And now I'm like, okay, here we are. It's time to be a Navy SEAL. Hell Week is 130 hours of continuous training. You might get two hours of sleep. And what it does is it's designed to break a man. If you only fix the surface, you will never get through Hell Week. We're all, you know, a lot of us are going through a hard time in life. Some people have been bullied, some people are just stressed out, some people are insecure, and the world puts a lot of this shit in your mind. It's not just you. I had to develop a mindset, a mindset that was indestructible. I had to armor plate my mind. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. We have a factory, a nice governor in our brain, and it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering. The second we feel that shit, our mind says, oh no, this isn't fun. We should back off. We should sit down, find something more comfortable. It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. The only way I can turn around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that would be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it. Retired Navy SEAL David Goggins is described as the toughest man on the planet. You're the only member of the U.S. Armed Forces to have completed Navy SEAL training, U.S. Army Ranger School, and Air Force Tactical Air Controller training, and you've competed in more than 60 ultra marathons, triathlons, and ultra triathlons, and breaking the world record for 4,030 pull-ups in just 17 hours. Why is the truth so important? I had to tell him where I came from to give people hope that, wow, that's where he came from, and now he's there? I'd like to take my mom up here, who... <clears throat> who never picked me up? Who never picked me up when I fell? She taught me how to get up when I was knocked down. Go into the pain of your life and say, why did this suck for me so bad? Why am I afraid of all this stuff? Why have I shut down the whole world? What makes you afraid of it? Study it. Because at times of hell, even the hardest men, we forget how hard we really are. Suffering is the true test of life. You face it every day. You face it every single day of your life. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey 
is you have got to suffer to grow. But a lot of us die never truly starting our journey.